Welcome to section 29 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure, and in this video we'll be discussing Shigella, which you can see right here. This scene will take place just off of Main Street with a bunch of horses in a parade. If you've ever been to a parade, you probably know that the horses usually poop all over the street. So notice that we've shown a bunch of poop all over the sidewalk from these horses. I guess you could call this poop shit depending on how vulgar you're feeling. And right now, to help you remember this image, we'll refer to this as shit, because shit sounds like Shigella. Just like in our other gram-negative videos, notice that we've made the sunset red appearing, and this is to help you remember that Shigella is gram-negative. This is a gram stain of Shigella. Notice that it's pink or red appearing under the microscope, and is rod-shaped, which is why it's classified as a gram-negative bacillus. Most parades have a pooper scooper team that walks alongside the horses and cleans up all of the poop. So, we've shown a team of three cleaning up the mess. And just like with our Salmonella video, these three guys working together to clean up the mess should help you remember that Shigella utilizes a type 3 secretion system. They're supposed to clean up the mess by placing it inside of the garbage. However, some of these guys are goofing off and thought it would be funny to intentionally splatter poop all over the guy towards the top of the image. Look at that poop all over his shoulder. That's pretty nasty. Anyway, this part of the scene is depicting one human transmitting the poop to another human which should help you remember that Shigella exhibits human-to-human -human transmission only. In other words, it's not transmitted through animals, unlike Salmonella enterica. Also notice that we've included several raspberry patches towards the front of the image. Just like in our Salmonella video, these are here to help you remember that Shigella invades the gastrointestinal tract through M cells, which are found in Pyres patches. We showed this in our Salmonella video, but recall that this is an image of Pyres patches seen from a cross-section of the ileum. The highlighted red circle right here is a Pyres patch. So Shigella goes from the lumen over here into the intestinal tissue by gaining access through M cells like this. Okay, with this in mind, let's return to the image. Now we've added horse reins to the scene. If you look closely at the reins, you can see that they look like they're comprised of a bunch of little balls that kind of resemble actin. Just so you have an idea of what I'm talking about, this depiction shows actin right here. As you can see, actin is often shown this way as a bunch of little balls lined up right next to each other. So just like in the image of actin, we've drawn the reins in a way that resembles this to help you remember that Shigella manipulates the host's actin filaments, which allows the organism to move intracellularly. Now notice that we've shown the horse tracking a bunch of poop in the street. He must have stepped in the poop earlier, and now you can see a trail of poop-stained hoof prints along the street. If you look closely at these hoof prints, they kind of resemble the nuclei of neutrophils. After all, polymorphonuclear cells, or neutrophils, are named after their nuclei. So we've included this in the image to help you remember that the immune response to Shigella is primarily neutrophils. This is an example of some neutrophils. You can see one, for example, right here. As you can see, there are multiple nuclei within a single neutrophil, and this pattern resembles the horse poop tracks we just saw. Next, notice that we've shown a guy that's handcuffed and sitting on the ground. I guess you could say he's unable to move, or immodal. This is to help you remember that Shigella is immodal, because it doesn't have a flagellum. So just to be clear, Shigella is immodal when it's located outside of the host cell, because it doesn't have a flagellum. However, once it enters the host, it can utilize the host's actin filaments to move intracellularly. Okay, so this guy is handcuffed to the ground, but why? Well, as you can see, there's been a big altercation between this news crew and local law enforcement. The 60-minute news crew is attempting to record this parade, but the police officers are not having it. The guy handcuffed on the ground got pretty upset and was protesting, so the officers handcuffed him and put him on the ground. Anyway, the guy holding the clapperboard that says 60 minutes on it should help you think of the 60S ribosomal subunit. This, along with the fact that this camera crew is being inhibited by law enforcement, should help you remember that Shigella produces a toxin known as shigatoxin, which inhibits the 60S ribosomal subunit. To make matters worse, there appears to be a big group of protesters attacking the police officers. They must be pretty upset that they're not allowing this camera crew to record the parade. Now we can see them throwing pieces of coal at law enforcement. If you look closely at the coal, you can see that it's covered in blood. And these two symbols together are a reference to enterohemorrhagic E. coli, which we'll discuss in the next video. For now, just know that coal sounds like E. coli, and blood should help you think of hemorrhagic. So these ideas together should help you remember that enterohemorrhagic E. coli produces a toxin that closely resembles shigatoxin and is known as shiga-like toxin. If coal wasn't bad enough, now notice that one of the protesters has thrown a bunch of orange juice at one of the policemen. Fortunately for the policeman, he has a big shield to block it. The orange juice splatter should make you think of acid because orange juice is moderately acidic and the fact that the policeman is blocking it should make you think of resistant. So these two ideas together should help you remember that unlike Salmonella, Shigella is acid resistant. This means that the pathogen is not 
inactivated by gastric acid. So, only a few pathogens are necessary in order for it to invade the gastrointestinal tract and cause infection. Another way of saying this is that a low inoculum is required to cause infection. So, orange juice being blocked for Shigella is acid resistant. Now let's turn our attention to the people riding the horses. As you can see, the person on the back of the horse is throwing candy to any bystanders, just like you typically see in a parade. However, this person must not be paying very close attention because red candy is aimlessly being thrown on top of the poop. Anyway, the red candy on top of the poop should make you think of red stools. So this is here to help you remember that the Shiga toxin causes damage to the GI mucosa, resulting in dysentery and bloody diarrhea. Shiga toxin also causes hemolytic uremic syndrome. This is a condition characterized by anemia, thrombocytopenia, and renal failure. To represent this idea, we've shown little tangled up knots in the strings that attach to the red balloons. The tangled up strings resemble glomeruli, and the red balloons resemble the red blood cells. So together, this should help you remember that the Shiga toxin causes damage to the kidneys and red blood cells. Because we've never discussed this before, let's pull up a blank screen and discuss the pathophysiology in a bit more detail. To begin, let's draw out a blood vessel, which is of course lined with endothelial cells. So I'll draw these here. Normally, von Willebrand factor is produced from the endothelial cells and platelets, and it's an important molecule that binds to damaged endothelium to assist with hemostasis. So I'll draw von Willebrand factor right here. Initially, von Willebrand factor is made as multimers, so we'll draw two of them together, like this. Later on, it's degraded into monomers by an enzyme known as Adam TS13. So Adam TS13 degrades von Willebrand multimers into monomers. In hemolytic uremic syndrome, the Shiga toxin damages the endothelial cells, which is thought to result in decreased Adam TS13. So let's show this by crossing out Adam TS13. Once this occurs, the von Willebrand multimers are unable to be degraded into monomers. So we've shown two multimers stuck together. Importantly, von Willebrand multimers promote abnormal platelet adhesion. So platelets begin to pile up, resulting in the formation of a small thrombus, or a microthrombus. So let's show a bunch of platelets surrounding these von Willebrand multimers. As the platelets form thrombi, they are consumed, resulting in thrombocytopenia. So this is the first unique finding of hemolytic uremic syndrome. As you can imagine, the red blood cells that have to pass through these small blood vessels are partially lysed due to the mechanical interaction with the thrombi. So let's draw a big red blood cell right here. And as it passes through this thrombus, like this, the red blood cell becomes partially lysed. Obviously, the lysis of red blood cells results in hemolysis and anemia, so this is the second unique finding of hemolytic uremic syndrome. Likewise, the partial lysis of the red blood cell results in the formation of what are known as schistocytes. So this partially lysed cell is also called a schistocyte, and this is the third unique finding of hemolytic uremic syndrome. Finally, because this condition predominantly occurs in the kidneys, it results in renal failure and uremia. So uremia is the fourth and final unique finding of hemolytic uremic syndrome. So in summary, Shiga toxin causes hemolytic uremic syndrome, which can be identified by four unique findings, thrombocytopenia, hemolytic anemia, schistocyte formation, and uremia. This is a picture of schistocytes, and as you can see, the red blood cells look partially lysed, and some may even resemble a helmet, which is why they may also be referred to as helmet cells. Okay, with this in mind, let's return to the image. Now we've added a guy next to the camera crew who appears to be writing down some information. He's actually a journalist, and is taking notes about how law enforcement is unlawfully shutting down this camera crew. Anyway, just like in our Salmonella video, the guy writing is here to help you remember that Shigella may cause Reiter syndrome, which is also known as reactive arthritis. All right, now notice that we've shown a big parade float towards the back of the image. Let's zoom up so you can see this better. These four characters will represent the four species of Shigella that you need to be familiar with for step one. We've shown them in a line with the species that cause the most severe disease closest to your view and the species that cause the least severe disease furthest away from the view. So let's discuss them in order. First, notice that the guy towards the front is holding up a disco ball with some poop on it. The poop, or shit, represents Shigella and the disco ball sounds like dysentery. So together, this guy with the poop on the disco ball should help you remember Shigella dysentery. Again, because he's closest to the view, this species is the most severe of the four species. Next, we've shown a big buff guy who is clearly flexing his muscles and showing off his biceps. Flex sounds like flexneri, so this should help you remember Shigella flexneri. Because he's second in line, this species is the second most severe of the four. The third guy in this line is a big bodybuilder with a tank top to show off all of his muscles. Bodybuilder sounds like body eye, 
So he's here to help you remember Shigella body eye. Because he's third in line, this species is the third most severe of the four. Finally, the guy at the end of the line looks very similar to the third guy, but he's a bit smaller. This is because he's his son. Son sounds like Sonii, which should help you remember Shigella Sonii. Because he's the fourth in line, this species is the fourth most severe of the four. Okay, now that we've covered all of the species, let's zoom out and finish up by discussing treatment. As you can see, we've shown a singer guy standing on top of an amp. The amp is here to help you remember that Shigella can be treated with ampicillin. Now we've added a flower staff next to him. The flowers serve as a decoration that will hopefully attract more attention to him. Anyway, the flower staff is here to help you remember that fluoroquinolones can also be used. Next, notice that we've shown the handcuff guy sitting on the ground with some meth on his lap. Let's zoom up on this so you can see it better. There you have it, caught right in the act. So perhaps he was arrested for being in possession of drugs. Just like in our prior videos, the meth crystals are here to help you remember trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, which can also be used to treat Shigella. Finally, remember the pooper scooper crew? Well, one of these guys is actually using a trident, and this is here to help you remember that ceftriaxone can also be used. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 12-year-old girl is brought to the emergency department due to bloody diarrhea which began two days ago. Stool cultures grow non-lactose fermenting gram-negative bacilli that do not produce hydrogen sulfide when grown on triple sugar iron agar. It is determined that her infection is caused by an extremely invasive organism that can cause disease with exposure to as few as 10 organisms. The pathogenesis of this patient's condition is most likely caused by A, hematogenous spread, B, invasion of cells that overlie intestinal lymphatic aggregates, C, aerosolized inhalation, D, excess proliferation of normal bacterial flora, or E, spore germination. Okay, let's talk about the key points. First, the child has bloody diarrhea, which should be making you think of an enteric-related infection, such as E. coli, Salmonella, Shigella, or Campylobacter. Second, stool cultures grew non-lactose fermenting, gram-negative bacilli that did not produce hydrogen sulfide on TSI agar. E. coli ferments lactose, Salmonella produces hydrogen sulfide on TSI agar, and Campylobacter is comma-shaped. So the information from the question stem helps us eliminate each of these possibilities from the differential and leaves us with the diagnosis of Shigella. Finally, the fact that the invasive organism can cause disease with exposure to as few as 10 organisms is a clue that this organism is acid resistant, so it can easily pass by the gastric acid and cause infection, which is suggestive of Shigella. So with this in mind, the correct answer is B, invasion of cells that overlie intestinal lymphatic aggregates. Rather than flat out saying M cells, this answer choice is describing M cells. So M cells overlie Peyer's patches, which are just intestinal lymphatic aggregates. And it's here that Shigella gains entry into host cells, where it can then cause cell death and spread to adjacent cells. From the image, recall that the raspberry patches right here are here to help you remember that Shigella invades the gastrointestinal tract through M cells of Peyer's patches. A is incorrect because Shigella spreads from cell to cell, not hematogenously. C is incorrect because Shigella is not inhaled. Rather, it enters the host through the GI tract. D is also incorrect because Shigella is never part of the normal flora. Finally, E is incorrect because Shigella is not spore-forming. If you chose this, you may have been thinking of C. diff, which can cause watery diarrhea and is a spore-forming organism. So again, the correct answer is B, invasion of cells that overlie intestinal lymphatic aggregates. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about Shigella.